Hey guys, I'm Oliver Hay, and this is Electric Drive Africa. Today we're at EVPA in Nelspreet, Mbombela, South Africa, at a company that converts fossil fuel vehicles into fresh electric cars. They specialize in conservation and poaching and doing a lot of really interesting projects. Come on, let's go take a look. This is the workshop at uh, EPBA. Um, behind us here we've got a whole bunch of vehicles we're working on and we're going to be showing you a little bit of that today and my job is to oversee everything and make sure this company actually can work. Well EPBA is quite a broad um, company so there's different sectors in there so we've separated um, um, EPBA into lots of little different companies so one will be electric safari vehicles electric commercial vehicles, um, agricultural vehicles and possibly aviation as well at the end of the year. Well this company basically does conversions so um, on electric vehicle, uh, so from normally aspirated vehicles to electric vehicles and um, it's made from the fossil fuels and trying to make vehicles more sustainable. Well we've been doing it now for uh, five years. We, uh, I think our first vehicle we built was five years ago and we did a, a Toyota Land Cruiser and since then we've come quite a long way and um, we're getting better at it and I think we'll still continue improving. Um, so it's an evolving um, business but uh, yeah so basically five years now in, in sort of production. Um, so electric vehicles are limited in terms of range um, because of the battery tech I'm sure that's going to improve so what will happen is it will get cheaper over time at the moment it's still quite pricey but for commercial um, users um, it's definitely beneficial um, there's no more need to worry about fuel and um, no more theft and it's obviously better for the environment um, over time as well. EPVA Electric Powered Vehicles Africa so um, we try and keep all the IP under one roof so it helps a lot um, to take all that expertise into every different sector of vehicle and it's, it's quite a nice um, sort of, uh, how can I say, collaboration um, from other people that want to come and do things we can basically say well here's a, here's a company or, or form your company we'll supply you the IP and make sure um, you, you build vehicles according to the specifications that are required um, as it's quite unregulated at the moment and um, components are an issue to get hold of so we know exactly where to get all the components so we, we basically want to try and help as many people as possible uh, to be able to convert vehicles obviously for the benefit of everyone. Well the project is for Homestead one's actually sitting behind me right now they asked us to basically see what we can come up with in terms of a game vehicle and asked us can we do this, can we do that and um, there are no limitations. I don't believe that we should limit ourselves so we, we've got this piece of equipment behind us and it's got from a bar fridge in the front to a whole coffee serving station in the rear, heated cooled seats and wireless charging so basically all the bells and whistles you can think of on a game bureau. So that one's quite a cool project and um, um, I like the light commercial vehicles as well, the delivery vehicles, that's also really cool. It's a fun car to drive as well, um, so that's quite nice. Yeah. So any electric vehicles, um, because there's not that much information on it, people don't realize that you need um, kilowatt hours to basically get distance. And it's quite, a sim it's quite simple to actually convert to electric, but to get your range and charging and distances and power, that's a, that's a calculation you do basically as per the request of the customer. So um, range is obviously gonna um, be a, a, a factor in terms of pricing because the further the range 
the more batteries you need to which makes it um, a little bit more expensive so we try and basically give a customer what they need uh, based on their budgets but give them a quality product at the end of the day in terms of a vehicle costing the the ballpark or where it starts off at, I think the minimum you can actually use is a, about a 125 volt system, uh, 22 kilowatt hours, and, and that'll come in at about 450,000. And that should give you a range on a small vehicle, anything from 90 to 150 kilometers. And um, yeah, charge time will obviously just depend on the charger you put in, but on that you'll, you'll be able to charge up in about three, four hours um, included in that price. So it's more or less a ballpark figure. Anyone can come to us with a conversion. We, we're there to help and um, we're there to put you in the right direction. So there's no limitations. Um, we're busy with some seriously big projects here. So from a tractor all the way to a car and a game viewer. Um, I'd like to just specialize in the game viewer. So that'll be the Forte, basically, the to to make sure we on the conservation front, and um, yeah, you know, the rest. How big do you have to go? We'll we'll see how how we do. So let's let's keep it there. So we've repurposed a vehicle. Um, it's going to be around for another 15, 20 years. So that's quite cool. And then when it comes back. It's without a smoky diesel engine, and then it looks something like this. Um, this one's a little bit fancy, so it's actually got a pop-up fridge in the front. Uh, the inlay's just out at the moment, so all, all activated by remote control. So you get your fridge and drinks over here with a table, um, gas shop on the front, so it lifts up nicely and it's very, very sturdy. And then this is basically what is inside the engine bay. That's your motor controller. Um, this is a, called a DC to DC converter. So what that does is it takes um, the place of an alternator. It charges your 12 volt system back up. So on a vehicle, we still use the existing 12 volt stuff. Um, so that runs all your ABS, your, your, um, all your diff locks, all the lights, etc. like that. So this basically puts back energy into the battery and then on this side you'll see on the other side there's a I'll come around this side over here is a is a onboard charger so that's what an onboard charger looks like and we've got two of everything here just because we need more power and we want to charge up a little bit faster and then actually on the front on the front over here um, these are basically some relays, power relays, and stuff for the 12 volt stuff. And um, it's basically all the high voltage stuff. So we've, we've made it quite fancy. We've put the shunt and everything inside here, and uh, main uh, fuses as well. And then this basically closes up, and then you connect, up, you connect that up to your, to your, um, to your motor. So that supplies this motor controller, and that's from the battery, so your positive negative from the DC side. And then this uh, motor is an AC motor, so it's got an inverter, and um, it's quite nice because you can program a lot of stuff as well. So we can tweak a whole lot of things. This is quite interesting on the Defenders. Uh, this is actually a Tesla brake system. So we've adapted the Tesla braking system to uh, the Defender, it's uh, very very strong and this works electric so um, normally you'd have a big black thing over here which is called a booster and you'd need a vacuum inside there to make it really easy to press the brakes and, and that's now resolved all that uh, problem of having vacuum pumps and things like that so this is just an electric pump so very very strong brakes so it's, it's got uh, really good brakes these Defenders. So yeah, behind us, it's also quite quite a, a story. We've got heated, cooled seats, um, and we've got center console fridges. We've got some tape on at the moment. I think something was there. And then there's a tablet mount on the, on the bars. So that's quite nice for guys doing birding and, and that type of thing. So really, really nice 
to have on a safari for learning and education. And um, yeah, uh, that's basically about it. There's many reasons why to go electric. Um, in, in, in the conservation side of things, at least, uh, you know, there's no fumes going into those uh, sensitive wildlife areas. Uh, secondly, there is going to be a point where it's going to be more cost effective to own an electric vehicle. In terms of maintenance, uh, power and um, drive, drive satisfaction, it, it is quite nice to drive an EV. And then obviously the, the, the CO2 emissions basically, um, I, I would say EVs aren't 100% green because of the manufacturing of components and things like that but it is far better than using fossil fuels. Um, you've still got to mine fuel, you're still going to have to mine some, and also it's better than what we're doing currently. And the efficiency is also quite great. So if you, if you look at um, you know, power on motors versus an engine, like what, you know, the amount of fuel that burns, the efficiency right there versus EVs are way, EVs are way better. So it should work out cheaper in the end. Um, for the end users, so yeah, those are the main reasons why you need to be driving EVs. If you haven't ever driven an EV, I'd say that's a good place to start. So come and test drive one, yeah, if you'd like. Uh, jump in a Game Gear or a Caddy, I'd say that's a great place to start. And then from there, worry about what it costs later. Uh, so that's the mind change you're going to have to do to get to get uh, to be driving an EV and it's got to it's you just got to make it affordable for yourself basically yeah. thank you guys for watching our first ever South African episode of electric drive Africa if you enjoyed this video please consider dropping a like and subscribe to if you want to see more of our awesome content on sustainability and electric vehicles. That's it for now. Godspeed. <laughs>